Well, a case of the devil, you know, um, and that is Eddie Jones, the devil we know. Of course, uh, he's going now into his second stint as uh, the Wallaby coach, and he's hit the ground running. Apparently, he got all sorts of attention and accolades when he turned up to the Sydney Sevens at the weekend with photos with uh, children that had never even heard of him. Uh, so uh, he's obviously cutting right through uh, everything that Dave Rennie did and said, look, uh, goodbye, Dave. I am here. I am your saviour. Look out, the All Blacks. So... Uh, this is uh, an interesting uh, scenario here. Uh, you can call in if you like, or you can text in on double eight double three phone. The phone number is 0800 150 But for the next uh, quarter of an hour, we thought we might just focus in on a press conference, to, uh, which Eddie Jones was uh, the central figure in, and uh, tell us um, what you think of the reaction to some of the things. Logan, uh, you put this together. Um, what are we going to begin with? What, what, what do you think? I mean, he's a man of many words and many promises, so what do you think? He definitely is a man of many words. This press conference went for about 40, 45 minutes uh, yesterday. So as you said, I was burning the midnight oil and listening back to a lot of this. Uh, first up, I mean, the massive task ahead. How does the Wallabies, how does Eddie Jones win back Australia? I guess winning helps, but how do you win back fan support, fan loyalty, and really re-energise what, what lies beneath? Yeah, well, I think, you know, Australian rugby's gone through tough periods before. This is not unusual. You know, if you, if you just look back at when the Ellers came through, you know, in 77, they played for Matchville High. 77, they played for the Australian schoolboys. Went and won everything in the UK. And that set off uh, a, a movement in Australian rugby, you know, and at that time, there was some time during that time, Australia got beaten by Tonga at the cricket ground. And then the Ellers came through and they changed the way the game was played. You know, they changed that, that spirit of Australian rugby, which was a bit of a mismatch between New South Wales and Queensland. And they changed it back to an aggressive running style of rugby. And they changed the fortunes of Australian rugby that culminated in 84, the Grand Slam, you know, with the world's best coach in Alan Jones. You know, his only competitor is Clive Woodward, but they're, they're having a good go at each other, so one of them will work out who's the greatest coach. Uh, and then, then, you know, ended up winning the World Cup in, in 1991. Um, and then 1999, we won the World Cup. And we want to start that period again because we're not short of talented players here. There's plenty of talented players. But talent doesn't win World Cups. What wins World Cups and wins the hearts of people are teams that play with that same spirit the Ellers had about being aggressive, playing with a certain panache. That doesn't mean you run with the ball all the time because kicking can be as, as artistic as, as running the ball, but we want to play with a certain panache. We want to play tough so at the end of games, when those tight games, you win those tight games by one or two points, and that's the traditional Australian digger spirit. We want that in the team. And that's the opportunity for this group of players this year. You know, where can we take the team? And if we play like that, people will want to watch rugby again. You know, Mark was saying he doesn't want to come and watch us play until we play well. So we need Mark to be at the ground, so we better play well. Um, and that's, that's good to hear. We want, we want that pressure on ourselves. We want to perform. And that's the opportunity for this group of players coming forward. And, you know, I'm only a small part of it. Eddie Jones, you're far from a very small part of it. That was an interesting uh, little out cue to that one. Uh, also interesting to note that he very heavily focused in on the Aller brothers there. Now, the Aller brothers were at the Sydney Sevens uh, at the weekend, apparently, and he sought them out personally. Um, obviously, he's got a very close relationship with them, but he does uh, uh, qu quote them quite often in that uh, little segment there. Incidentally, uh, text us uh, with your reaction to some of the stuff you're hearing from Eddie Jones. Uh, double eight, double three. We'll uh, read your text out. There's no problem with that on the temper bedpost text machine so don't have to have talent to win a world cup you have to um <laughs> apparently you just have to play the way that uh, they played back in those days so um that's uh, interesting i suppose uh, ian foster getting out all the available tapes he can from uh, the tvnz days of uh, the Aller brothers and trying to be very careful about how they're going to try and play the game if that's the spirit they want uh look you've got to have talent eddie you've got to have talent you've got to have the cattle Right, let's uh, move on to uh, the next side of things, Logan, which is what, about creating a legacy? Yeah, and I think the big thing here, I mean, talking about, you know, trying to win back Australia, you know, they talk about trying to put rugby back on the uh, back pages. 
I mean, when I was working in Australian media, in media, no one really gave a damn about rugby. It was all rugby league in New South Wales, and it's all AFL in, in Victoria. Rugby union barely gets a mention. So, but it's it's interesting to see this kind of romance of Eddie Jones coming back. So, yeah, the big thing is, is what is his legacy going to be now that he's back with the Wallabies? I think it's a five-year deal. You're going to have a long time within this job. In an ideal world, what does that legacy look like for Rugby Australia and rugby heading forward? Oh, well, it's only a year, mate. We've got to win the World Cup. Our target's to win the World Cup. We win the World Cup, it changes things for, for rugby in Australia. So our target's to win the World Cup, then we'll worry about what happens after. And to win the World Cup, yeah, we're going to take this talented group of players who are going to have to work together uh, to make a team that has a competitive edge over the rest of the world. And if you look at world rugby at the moment, there's six teams not separated by, by a, a cigarette paper. You know, they're, they're so tight, and the team that learns the most over the next nine months will be the team that lifts the uh, William Webb Ellis Trophy in, in Stade de France on the 28th of October at about 11 p.m. And we're intending that to be us. Um, and then, then from that, kids that want to play rugby. You know, you saw out there, we went out to school, out, the kids there, there were year seven kids, most of them played soccer, you know, because they've watched the Socceroos, they're excited about what the Tildes are going to do in the, in the Women's World Cup, uh, and there was a small number of rugby. When we were at school here, when Gary and Mark and Glenn and Storzy were here, you know, it would have been the opposite. They were all rugby kids and a little bit, a few kids that play play soccer. So we, we need to create role models and we need to create heroes for the young kids. Mm, okay, the Aller brothers appearing again in that one, as was the word <laughs> talented. So um, Eddie's um, being consistent with nothing else there. Um, yeah, his, his legacy is, uh, and I, I agree with that, don't look, uh, don't reach for the stars if you, uh, you know, you can't get the rocket ship fired up. And that means in the next 12 months, uh, of course, heading in, and he even knows the time that he hopes that his uh, side is uh, Michael Hooper or James Slipper or whoever he will appoint as captain uh, will be holding up the William Webb Ellis Trophy. Uh, it's 10-10 here. We'll continue on this Eddie Jones uh, theme. Uh, Logan, um, is it the same Eddie Jones that we saw last time around? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, who's to say, Smithy? I mean, that was a big question that he got thrown at uh, in this press conference yesterday is, you know, he's been known to be a bit of a hard ass on the players uh, in the past. Is he going to be like that this time around with the Wallabies? Where is the Eddie Jones of today compared to the Eddie Jones of the past? Uh, look, yeah, you know, for every team you coach, and, and since since Australia in 2005, I've coached a few teams. You've got to just find the right spot for those players. What's the right spot to get them absolutely motivated? Because when we're talking about motivation, everyone in this room at the moment thinks they're concentrating at 100 per cent. Everyone thinks that. And every player thinks they're playing at 100 per cent. But what we know is that the human being has so much more in them. So what, what we're trying to find is that discretionary 5 to 10 per cent where the ball goes over your head and you make a decision on whether you run hard or you don't run hard. Yeah, that's, that's what we're looking for. And so I don't know how I'm going to have to coach the Wallabies, whether I'm going to have to be hard or I'm going to have to be supportive or I'm going to have to challenge or, or what being street is until I get the players. What I do know is that our players don't lack talent. They don't lack talent. If you, if you did a World 15 today on talent, you'd have a fair few Australian players in there. Yeah, you just got to look potentially at the back line Australia could have, potentially. Yeah, and you're thinking, you know, is there a better back line in the world? Now, but that does, again, you know, as I said, that doesn't win your test matches. What wins your test matches is that whether you're going to run hard to do that inside clean, whether you're going to go back over your head, whether you're going to chase that kick. And so I need to find the right balance there. And it's not just the head coach, it's the assistant coaches. Because when you think of modern rugby now, and you think of how much work's done to prepare a team, the vast majority of the work is done by the assistant coaches. Now, I've got a role to play, so we've got to find the right level of coaching for those players so they want to give a bit more. They want to give a bit more. Then when they give a bit more, they want to give a bit more again. You know, it's that old thing, you know, Rogers Bannister breaks a four-minute mile. 
So when he breaks a four-minute mile, they say, at that time, the medical history says your body disintegrates. You can't run that fast. You can't run that fast. Then next year, what happens? Six or seven people run the four-minute mile. The Kenyan breaks the two-hour two marathon. Next day, the women marathon runner breaks the world record. So our players don't know how good they can be. And I've got, I've got a role in, in trying to prod them, sometimes conjoling them, sometimes loving them, uh, whatever word you want to use to get a bit more out of them. Let's see where we can take them, mate. <laughs> take see how far you can take them, mate. Uh, you got, you got, I, I, I've got so much more interest now in Australian rugby. I've got to say, and I'm, I'm not saying I was disinterested when Dave Rennie came on because Dave Rennie's such a good bugger. Um, you, you almost felt like uh, if they beat us, well, so be it. Um, let's move on. But uh, I feel entirely different now uh, <laughs> with this with this rooster in charge. Um, and speaking on that subject, uh, of course, as well, he was uh, quizzed on the Bledisloe Cup importance too. Where does the Bledisloe Cup rank? It's been what, 22 years or so, um, 21 years. Uh, is that priority number one? Because Australians often compare themselves to those across the ditch. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty important. It just uh, when I was jogging there with Googie, it reminded me of because uh, we're playing Dunedin, aren't we? Uh, when we won it, or we retained it, I think we won it. I can't remember. Won it? We won it. 2021 in Dunedin, uh, and Googie was part of that. And the party we had afterwards was fantastic. Uh, and the, Steve Larkham, who's one of our Super Rugby uh, coaches now, was brilliant on that day the way he uh, manipulated the, the space against the Kiwis. And, and that's a big target for us because we know as, a, as Australians, if we can take New Zealand, then we're in a good position to take the World Cup. So we'll certainly be prioritising that. But again, it won't be the be all and end all because the World Cup is, is a major tournament. But certainly, you know, we've got a home game against them in Melbourne uh, where we ha hope to have a sellout crowd, which will be a great occasion. And we know that uh, the last time the Australians played there, you know, the referee made a difficult decision at the end of the game um, and is still recovering from it. Um, and Australia went close and it's a, game, it's, a, it's a ground, Melbourne cricket ground, where Australia traditionally play well. Um, so that, you know, we, we can get the lead in the series then and then go to Dunedin. You know, what a fam fabulous place to win back the Bledisloe Cup. So that's the picture in the head, mate. Eddie Jones said 2021 there, Smitty. I think uh, he's getting his years and dates uh, a little bit confused. It's been 21, 20 years since they've won the Bledisloe Cup. He's thinking of Carisbrook in 2001. It's been a while, Smitty. Okay. It has been a while. It has been a while. Uh, we've been getting texts in as well, um, as we asked for, and keep them coming in. We'll read them out. Does he have any idea what he's talking about? He says he has a talented group. Also says talent doesn't win a World Cup, therefore Australia clearly don't win the World Cup. Nice win, Eddie, you drill bit, <laughs> you drill bit like that. That's from Brad. Uh, Jared, uh, love or hate him, he brings passion and experience to the Wallabies. Maybe Eddie is just the tonic for Australian rugby going forward. You might be right, Jared. Uh, you might be right. Certainly, uh, there are going to be headlines out of whatever happens in the reaction to that. Keep them coming in, double eight, uh, double three. Uh, yes, um, interesting man, of course. Um, it is uh, 10.17 here. We'll continue along this uh, little Eddie Jones uh, line because it's, <coughs> it's very interesting, actually. Um, and, and I guess um, he's been coaching against the Wallabies too, Logan, which is interesting. Yeah, he has. He has. Japan and England. So, I mean, the question is, I mean, when you face up against your former team, you probably learn a thing or two about them. And the Wallabies haven't done well on the international stage for a while. So what did Eddie learn from that time? Obviously played against the Wallabies a lot with England in recent years and had a very strong record there in recent times. Um, what, what areas do you think you were able to expose that you now need to, to work on to improve the team going forward? Well, it was better than strong, mate. Hey? Come on. It was better than strong. It was fantastic. Uh, look, it's a, what we did with England against Australia is really redundant now. It's, it's what the Australian team does now. And, you know, as we've discussed, it's been a, a tough period. And I think maybe COVID's been a difficult time for Australia and New Zealand rugby, that they were isolated for a long period, but we don't have any excuses now. So it's really important that 
that this Australian team, and we saw on the last tour how many games they lost closely, that that defines you as a test team. It's how many of those close games you win. Like when you're playing really well and the opposition are playing poorly, you'll win that game. Um, but it's those games where you're both at about 85, 90 per cent. You, know, you get one or two decisions against you and, and then the emotional state of the team comes through. Like every team starts a game excited, don't they? Every team starts a game excited. Like you don't see a team walking on the field with their head down, shoulders draped. They all start excited. But it's then the team that, that is able to cope with the disappointment in the game understand they're disappointed and then bounce back quickly and work out a way to get back on the front foot. And maybe we need to do that a little bit better, which is not an a uncommon thing with teams who haven't been winning. So the, that emotional state work will need to do a bit on that. 10.19 here on SENZ, you're listening to the new Wallabies coach or the reappointed uh, Wallabies coach and Eddie Jones, who's looking at his uh, second stint, uh, talking tough, as you would imagine, talking very positively, as you would imagine. Uh, and our last clip is uh, on Eddie Jones and uh, his thoughts on uh, the All Blacks. Hi Eddie, I'm Emma from TV3 in New Zealand. Um, how important is the rivalry between our two countries to you and what have you made of the All Blacks performance in recent seasons? Great to have a Kiwi, Kiwi here, isn't it? Just evens out the room a little bit. I'm outnumbered. <laughs> huh? No, nice to have you here. Sorry, what was your name again? Emma. 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 It's hard, sometimes a bit hard to understand Emma, with that New, yeah. Ze New Zealand accent, Emma, yeah? Uh, well, you know, I think the Kiwis have done really well, really well. You know, they went through that tough period last year uh, where, you know, if they lost that game in Johannesburg, there might have been a change of coach. And they battled through, won the rugby championship and then had a really good end of season tour. Um, and they've gone through that bit of transitional period where they've had a, you know, a great a great team from 2012 to 2016, you know, maybe coming off a little bit 2017 to 2019, and now they've had to rejig the team. So I think they've done really well. You know, they've always got great talent coming through, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see that see that in Super Rugby. Uh, good coach in Ian Foster, good support coaches in in Joe Smith, and you know the young bloke uh, from the Crusaders. Um, yeah, he does a good job there. So, yeah, I think they're in a pretty good spot. But we're coming after them, you know. We're going to be chasing them down the street. And that's a good thing. And we want that rivalry to be tough. And I think New Zealand want it as well. So we'll make sure we're chasing them. They're coming after us, Smithy. And uh, he's not wrong. We do want Australia to be stronger, for the All Blacks to be stronger. We need that competition, don't we? I mean, it's. but I do love the way he poked a little bit of fun at the New Zealand accent. So you know that rivalry is still there. Oh, no, it's great. It's, it's fantastic. As I said, uh, you know, it's going to be terrific in terms of the profile of uh, the Wallabies until they play. Uh, at the end of the day, they're still going to have to win under Eddie Jones or whoever. Uh, he made that point about um, we might have had a change of coach um, with uh, that win in uh, Johannesburg, uh, perhaps saving a, f a few people's bacon there. I just wonder if the French referee had not um, uh, called time on Bernard Foley kicking the ball into touch, whether Australia would have been having uh, a change of coach, whether what that would have meant for the Wallabies to beat the All Blacks in Melbourne, what that would have done for their season, what that would have done for their thoughts on... Uh, their, their thoughts on Dave Rennie and whether we would have even been hearing from Eddie Jones in this part of the world at the moment. Mm. Uh, it's a small thing, success and failure. It's a very, very, very fine line, particularly when you're at the top. Uh, we'll read some more texts out very shortly. Uh, thanks for your reaction to that segment of the show. It's 10.22.